Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Team of the Week podcast, the first edition of 2024, and uh, in pretty odd circumstances this afternoon. The school is gone, we have nothing left, the snow has taken everything and everyone, but we're still here. We're still here, and we have got another exciting episode for you, a up and under, or over and under a sporting challenge, I can't remember what it's called, it escapes me right now, following mind match, and we're going a bit different this half term. We're going to make it a half termly podcast where we will go through players who have performed well across the five week block um, instead of a, a weekly team of the week. Cuts down the editing time. Cuts down the editing time, yeah, of course. Uh, so we will start with the hockey. Now you will see. Where is he? There is no Mr. Anderson. No, Mr. Anderson. He's lost, gone home. Lost in the snow. He took the, uh, and fair play, he took the early finish. And the Wolves got him. The Wolves got him. So he finished early, but we have got the nominations for the players of the term for the hockey um, from all the coaches that take part, at, obviously, in the school hockey programme. We'll start with the under-12s, Rowan Vermeuler, um, picked by Mr. Anderson for his development and uh, tactical awareness um, and has become a real leader in that group, just so he said. Um, to be doing that at an under-12 age as well is really, really positive because it just demonstrates just early characteristics of leadership that you can then build on throughout the school, yeah. set good standards, maintain the quality of training that people are looking for. It's a really nice dynamic to have in the team that early on. Yeah, absolutely. And again, sticking with the quality of training, the second player of the term for the under-12s in the hockey is uh, Thomas Ingram. Again, he has progressed a lot technically, um, in particular his ball control. And Mr. Anderson mentioned that was specifically due to his commitment to games and training sessions. So well done to Thomas. I'd also like to add a one to watch, Zayden Banji. That should be a one to watch. Unbelievable cricketer as well. He's a very good cricketer. Got a good googly. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. So the under 13s, we've gone for one here. Charlie Mercer um, picked again for his. Um, Hard in that year group because they've got a lot of star players and, mm. um, you know, the, the ones that would be usually associated with that yeah. year group. But he's uh, slowly making himself more of a presence in that side and um, developing his skills well. And um, they've done well in the last few tournaments, uh, the Manchester Power Play and, the, and more recently, I can't remember the name of it. Well, for, so. someone, for someone like Charlie as well, where it is, as, as you alluded to, it's not necessarily a case of needing to, to run the show. It's, it's filling those gaps. It's knowing what your oh, role right. is yeah absolutely supplying that that kind of groundwork to then enable other people to 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 come into the game and be effective so yeah well done charlie really really pleased to hear you're in there absolutely and then going into the under 14s isaac lotier picked by mr lister for his exemplary attitude towards training and games and matches so it's obviously Always showing his, and well, you'd expect that from Isaac. Well, he's so is, he's so. so clever, like just in terms of raw intelligence, that you know that he's going to read the game well. He's going to and be as a able to, yeah, absolutely. And and between identifying threats ahead of time, the goalkeeper in general, regardless of sport, obviously really showcasing my hockey knowledge here. Um, <laughs> but it's a position that I think it's it's, it's obviously important, but it's very mentally taxing because yeah, yeah. you do have to spend brave. so much of the game communicating organizing without actually having to necessarily carry out a lot of the the skill sets that you do possess and then in an instant you are called into action you need to be able to to bring yourself you back into that moment 100 percent. yeah so well done isaac and then the other one from the under 14 has gone from max james picks i like this one it's just simple it's excellent performance in fixtures and there's not much more to it. He's just making an impact when it matters. Big game player. Yeah, not much more to say really, Max. So well done there. The under 15s. Now this man has played in the first team as well, so which is obviously a great sign for him. So Sam Allett picked for player of the term for the under 15s for his leadership and huge improvement in his speed of play and understanding of the game. Now, obviously, when you're playing at a higher level, like Sam will be, where he's playing against potential under 18s. Yeah you realise that that difference as you get older is the speed of the game and your tactical understanding of you know, at hockey at younger age, you just follow the ball around, a bit like you do in most sports, football, rugby, most invasion sports. Yeah. And it's just getting that understanding of, now I might not be in fact in the game there, but if my positioning over here can get me in a better spot, create space for someone else. Or... Building, that, yeah. building that experience younger down the school of what it's like at the top end it bodes very, very well for years to come. And on a side note, it... it 
He's got a very fortunate Queggs name there because the al- there always seems to be at least one Allot somewhere within Queggs mm. turning up trees. So, uh, well done. Is that a shout out to the previous brothers? Absolutely. From- <laughs> Fair enough. Very good. So, well done, Sam. Uh, the under-16s, Tom Hume, selected for his consistent impact in games and always looks to drive his team forward. Direct. Physically. 100%. Physically drives his team forward. 100%. So, well done, Tom. Um, it's good to uh, see your development keep going there. Um, it's it's under 16. I think that's Mr. Anderson as well. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, Tom, again, it's a good year group, the under 16. has got a good side. Um, again, I think that balance across to the cricket as well. A couple of hockey players play cricket yeah. as well. So, they've got a, a good um, core group of talented sports. Hand eye coordination is going to benefit you across both of them, isn't it, really? So, yeah, well done so, to all lads knowing it so far. And then yeah. finally. First team, again, another goalkeeper, Mr. Leesk, has gone for Ed Moran for his great attitude, committed, and maximises his ability with hard work. Absolutely. Big fearless. words from Mr. Leesk. Absolutely year, right? fearless. Yeah. Anyone who's willing to keep coming up to me on a parents' evening and consistently <laughs> offering me coffee after I've said I don't want it for the 10th time <laughs> is a brave, brave boy. Um, so, well done, Ed. Uh, not for and, your, that, and that reflects onto his goalkeeping. I was going to say, I was going to say, nothing to do with your uh, your hockey ability there, but just as a general human being, yeah, really good lad. Doesn't surprise me. That he's a good, that he's a good attitude to have around the squad. That Absolutely. he's committed to what he does because he seems to throw himself 100 yeah. into everything he does. As a year 13, he's going to lead from the front there, mm-hmm. isn't he? Or from the back as a goalkeeper. Or from the back, yeah. So well done to everyone there in the hockey players of the term. Um, some good selections in there, and uh, we look forward to seeing how. You develop in the next half term. Obviously, a lot of fixtures still to come, a lot of tournaments to play for. So, yeah, well done to everyone there. Okay, hockey finished. Yeah, Still going strong for the remainder of the season, but uh, we have got some rugby to talk about as well. Uh, Post-Christmas, obviously, we have a couple of 15s games, 15 aside games left to play. We block had a um, few block fixtures. We played Redillion, Lancaster. played Lancaster. Um, cancelled. Heimers was cancelled um, but we've also obviously had a couple of cup games going on as well alongside the seven season kicking off and real raw that you just mentioned that it needs to be mentioned yes. unfortunately okay, uh, we'll get to that we'll get to that we will get to that so we're starting with the under 12s for the A side picked by Mr Lewis we've got Henry Roberts and Joe Hunt Henry Roberts picked, down, uh, picked out for his uh, breakdown work and his tackling no surprise there and Joe Hunt as well for his tackling but also his strong carrying and like, they're a side that out of a, a bit of an anomaly in the school because they've they're actually got a lot of pace in there. And well, I was also going to say, after a, after a rocky start to the season, it does seem like they've started to put in some real performances towards the back end of the, the, back end of the season. It doesn't surprise me that those two in particular are lads getting recognised for, for the shifts and the performances they're putting in. Certainly going to be impact players, you know, when, when both of them are, are at their best and, and having an influence on the game. Yeah, absolutely. So well done, Henry and Joe. Moving on to the B team, selected by Mr. Ben. And uh, I had this conversation with Mr. Ben for his selections. He said he always likes someone who, you know, push comes to shove, skill-wise, whatever, is willing to work hard, you know, willing to work for the team. So he selected Jay Warby, um, an ever-present, and and gives a good go forward. He also earmarked him as a potential captain, leading forward for whoever, whichever side that may be. And also Sam Rain, again, similar, um, tough in contact and durable, his words. So, Does that mean he's therefore not good in the breakdown? Sorry? Can't be worn away, he's durable. Breakdown. Moving on. <laughs> Snowing outside. <laughs> We're carrying on. We're carrying on. Apologies. Oh well done, God. well done, Sam, and uh, well done to Jay. Um, <laughs> again, they're, they're trying to get into a, a pretty niche side there, where the A team have, have played a different sort of brand to the rest of the school, where they play with a bit more pace, a bit more width. Um, but it's good that they're keeping the B team going as well. With some good performances. Yeah, absolutely. Um, see how that rolls around next year. Are you with you next year? No. Yeah, they're under 12s, aren't they? So. Mm. These what will be, though. So moving on to the under 13s, the one and only Nefesh has been picked for the A side from Mr. Everett, as well as Alex Massey. So Nefesh was picked for his big development um, in his performance in match days. And also, he breaks the gain line, looks to offload, and increases pace with the, increasing the pace that they play at. So well Good. done to Nefesh. Nathesh stuck his hand up in house rugby quite clearly. Um, very physical, very direct. Um, I'm going to pitch that small. You were always going to know that he was on 
Uh, was he part of the winning house team? Ooh, now you're asking me. I think he was, actually. Bentley. He was. No, no. Bentley ended up in the third, fourth, because they... Uh, uh, Choked a little bit, I think. Uh, but you always uh, have to get your cave bias in there. So. Don't know what you're talking about. Uh, would it looks like we're going to win house rugby overall unless the year tens can uh, the year ten Savile team could potentially throw a spanner in the works? Stuff. But uh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Okay. Um, we're moving away from the the fact that uh, let's go back to Mr. Massey briefly. Yeah, Massey. Um, yeah, doesn't surprise me that he's in there. Um, good distributor. Mr. Everett raves about his his ability to to manage the game and. and I suppose the thing is when you have got a team that is so dynamic and needs to move the ball around the pitch quickly, yeah. they do have to play that real brand of rook and run rugby. So as soon as the ball is available, you want it gone to, to get into those wide channels and, and attack space effectively. And I think Alex has played obviously a really Yeah, and he's really also been pointed out here for his defensive work as well, which is always good for a nine. Just got to be a block, a boulder, however you want to get them down. You well, I, I think that as an initial raw skill set is, is important. Obviously, as he develops, he'll probably start Carrying out, you'd imagine more of a kind of shallow sweep, but still being able to make those tackles when people do break the line is yeah. really, really important. So, well done, Mr. Massey. Well done, the Thesh as well. So, moving into the B team with Mr. Hodson, Xander Irving, top guy, love Xander Irving, big fan, and Alistair Helm. So, well also done, a big fan, also a big fan. Yeah. So, Xander picked for his composure in attack, shows excellent organisation, flair when needed, and also just general game awareness. So, pretty, pretty all round. <laughs> He's uh, a set, set of skills there. He's a good sportsman, isn't he? Yeah. So that doesn't really surprise you. I think he's he's, he's going to to continue to grow and develop as uh, over the next couple of years into a, into a real sportsman, real player. Mm -hmm. um, and as you alluded to already, really really good lad. So well done, Zander, um, yeah. and Mr. Um, Helm as well. Yeah. So specifically his defensive work. So a leader in defence, and the example given was against RGS Newcastle. Massey and Helm both highlighted for their defence. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Uh, against Newcastle, I think they would have been away in a close game. Uh, one of their players in the, in the closing phases broke through, and Alistair put in a tackle to create a knock, to force a knock on, and then they ended up winning the game. So uh, it was a specific example given by Mr. Hudson. So well done, Alistair, for improving there. Um, he's also he generally plays nine, playing the wing. You know, good organiser. Doesn't um, surprise me at all. He's, yeah. He'll have had he'll have had Rufus running at him at home, and <laughs> we're gonna have to find a way to deal with that one way or the other. So, uh, well done, yeah, Alistair. Absolutely, well done. I just want to go back on the under twelves. B. Mr. Ben did tell me to point out a one to watch, like Zayden Banji was for the under twelves. Uh, Jackson Charlesworth. So, Jackson, you keep on improving. You're definitely uh, going in the right direction with your rugby. So, just keep that up as well. Very good. Well done to Jackson. Moving on to your side, sir. I'll let you take the floor here. Uh, under 14A, I had a few people that I could have nominated for this half term. Obviously, it has been that balance between the the 15s and the 7s stuff. Um, this lad has really stuck his hand up in the 15s throughout the season, um, but in a 7s capacity, he is. Absolutely electric. Alfie Brewster. His, he's one of the most balanced runners for his age that I've seen in a long, long time. He's not particularly tall, but very quick, very agile, and, and as I've alluded to, incredibly balanced. It changes direction at speed very effectively. Good feet, reads space very, very well. So he's very capable of kind of drifting across a line, throwing a dummy, picking a gap, going through it. He always looks like a threat. Um, and he's one of the main people I'm kind of trying to model the rest of the team off. So, very good, Mr. Brewster. Keep that up. Um, and then under 14B, Theo Marley, um, who was someone who I really thought had had a, a, a really strong season throughout the 15s campaign. Um, obviously, part of a side that almost went undefeated all season, put in yeah. a lot of very, very good performances. Really physical runner. Um, but he's actually... Stuck with it into the sevens portion of the season so far as well, um, and I even so the train still, yeah. well I highlighted him highlighted him yesterday as one of the only people within within an attacking line where we're we'll trying to do some shape who mm. was looking to offer something else in attack other than just we'll move it down the line one way we'll move it back the other. So to have that level of thought process from from someone who effectively has been playing tight five all year mm. is really nice to see. So well done, Theo. Keep it up. I was like, I was thinking about training last night. It was your on the AstroTurf in the 15s. How long ago that feels? Yeah. It was a lovely evening, sunny. Didn't even need the floodlights on in the AstroTurf until quarter past five. I was turning around and look outside. It looks, feels so long ago. Today has been a long, long day. But 
we move. We're still here. We're still we going. Oh, brings us on to today. Moving on to the under-15s. Um, <sighs> starting with the A-team, uh, Ethan Farrer has been picked as the player of the term. Someone that, in a side that possesses such size and ability, he, a bit like we were talking with Charlie Mercer for the hockey, finds his role and does his role really well. You know, works hard, makes his tackles, supports, you know, might not be the ball carrier, but might be the person to support and, yeah. uh, you know, create quick ball. Um, and he's really improved on that. And one thing with Ethan is he puts his heart and soul into every single game. And, um, yeah, he's, he's really improved this after. So. Has that real Quags dog in him. Yeah, absolutely. So, well done, Ethan. And then two selected by himself for the under-15s. B, I've gone for Oliver Eldridge, who's just really improved all year. Just uh, his ability to manage a side. Um, his skills have improved as well. Pass, catch, kick. Um, so, I had to pick Oliver for that. And then Ted Chester. So new to the school uh, just before Christmas, I think, yep. and uh, yeah, yeah. a very niche year group to try and Second become. Second time described a year group as niche, just to let you know that. Uh, well, which was the other one? Can't remember. But I will say, it's Ted Chester, and I think we've both had this conversation actually, because yeah. you see him progressing probably as as back row or maybe even into front row. But he's he's quick. Yeah, he is quick no and being physical, quick so uh, no, I'm not... Think not, about rugby number eight. not suggesting that it is. Um, well, do we really need to bring up multiple <laughs> cup runs with this lot right now? Um, shall we address the elephant in the room with the... Yeah, so we are filming just after the afternoon's fixture between Queggs and Northampton School for Boys in the Under-15 National Cup quarterfinal. Um, as you could expect, the weather, the photos will be going out on the socials. Um... Challenging. Uh, challenging, just covered in snow. I've never seen a leaf blower being brought out to Multi highlight the lines. Multiple leaf yeah, blowers. Three or four ground staff. So well done to the ground staff as well for getting immense, on. immense shift from them. Yeah, I think I think just quickly before we go into it, like I think a lot of uh, praise needs to go to the players, parents for coming in, still uh, coaches for getting it on, and say, the ground yes. staff, uh, everyone involved in organising the fixture. In the chaos of the snow, as uh, England likes to fall apart when a bit of snow comes down. Yeah. But we've done uh, really well to get it on, and it, it created a really good match. Unfortunately, fell just short, 17-10. But um, I don't think they'll look back with many regrets in that. In no, I think, I think it was just one of, those, one of those days where the plan that Northampton came with did work well in those conditions. They executed that, that well. Yeah. And I don't think we particularly executed our plan badly i think yeah. i think in general we retained the ball well we looked to try and exploit gaps out some of our big physical runners were relentless with trying to to give us that go forward in that second half you it really could have gone either way i mean how meant how long were we camped on that northampton line yeah, you've got to give credit to them for keeping us out absolutely and, and also when, when we were reeling off all of the all of the the people who should be commended for today um, I think it would be remiss to say to them uh, or to not mention Northampton as well because yeah. at short notice earlier when when we needed them to realistically get up here quickly in yeah. order to be able to to hopefully still get the game on before the worst of the weather, I think they, they put in a real shift to, to get up here and make yeah, a game absolutely. of it. So, so well yeah, done to the opposition and, as uh, well. Obviously, we wish you well in the semi-finals with whoever you come up against. Um, so well done as well for the 15s. It's been a long up and down season, but I think you'll look back um, and develop on your development and uh, be proud of yourself. So well done as well. Uh, moving on to the final two teams, the senior sides, the second 15. I'm not surprised to see these two names in there. Harrison Powell and Will Hunter. Um, again, I think uh, Mr. Pearson mentioned Harrison again as a leadership as, as the main, you know, obviously Harrison comes with work ethic, you know, he'll always leave his his engine out on the yeah. field, but his leadership's really come through. And under 16 playing in, you know, against under 18s, with under 18s, for his leadership to come through, it shows um, a real quality. No, absolutely. I think he's he's transitioned in the last couple of years so well into that kind of pack, a nine. pack mentality. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, he was a nine for me. Um, but I think, yeah, his, his skill set seems to be coming into its own. You'd imagine he'll be there or thereabouts next year. He's been knocking on the door of the first team multiple times this yeah, year as well. Names, yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously we'll come on to Will Hunter, but uh, both of those lads got a run out at uh, Durham Sevens. Oh, Durham, well, yeah, St. Joe's as well, but Durham Sevens um, yesterday as we filmed this, yeah. uh, putting a decent shift there. I think Mr. Pearson was was genuinely going into that that first tournament, just looking to to see how the 
the team was starting to gel, the shape was coming together. This is the under 16s rather than the second team, obviously. Yeah, Mr. Lawson was um, but uh, but yeah, it, it seemed seemed to be a, a, a good opening run out. I think they came third overall. Yeah. So so That's well done to them. Um, should we briefly discuss Will as well? Yeah, Will selected for just his game management, as you'd expect, a very confident, uh, so someone you'd want in every team. Someone who's willing to take the burden on, I'll control things if things are going wrong, or or, or even when things are going well, he's normally the you know the orchestrator of good things when uh, Quags attack is going well. His his mindset and attitude and leadership within a game reminds me of a a, a pre pre England retirement Owen Farrell. I thought you were going to say a young Ed Hunter. Definitely wouldn't say that. They are absolute entities in their own right, both quality players. But yeah, he's got that that rally, he's got rallying ability. Everyone buys into what Will has to say. When yeah. he says something on the pitch, it gets done. Yeah. Um, and when you've got other deputies on the pitch, like like a Powell, like a Walsh, to continue to to push that message across and maintain discipline and and structure within a game, it, it's not surprising they've had such a successful year. So, well done both. Yeah, absolutely. Well done, guys. And then the last team, the first, making out the last team, the first team, uh, the first team, uh, Will Heath uh, and Jack Bailey have both been fit, picked by Mr. Cook. Will Heath, again, I think he's one that always leads by example in terms of his attitude. I think he's played 9, 10, 15 this season. I think he would have come through in the school as a, as a 10. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think he's not been one to moan, question why, shy just, away from something just, new. Just, yeah, just does what he is expected to do. And um, you want a bit like Will. You want one, Will Hunter. You want one of those in your side. You know, very selfless. Yeah, goes wherever is needed for the team. Big and, distributor. Um, yeah, and he's just uh, just marshals the side well as a sort of not not skipper, but sort of second tier leadership group in the backs. Yeah, he's, I he's agree with all of that. Yeah. And then finally, the man mountain. Yeah, Jack, Jack Bailey. Jack Bailey. Fortunately, had a bad, bad injury, didn't he? He just ruled him out for the foreseeable, but... Between, between... And we've, we've said it's been quite a recurring theme, as you'd imagine it would be for, for lads who are getting nominated for this, but when we're talking about leadership and leading by example, I really don't think there is currently anyone in Queggs who can claim to represent that quite as much as Jack Bailey does. His mm. mentality is brilliant. He's just a, a general, general on the pitch, and, and a genuinely nice bloke as well. Yeah. You know that everything that he can give, he will do, yeah. um, whether it's on the on the pitch or off the pitch. Um, so good luck in your recovery, Jack. But but congratulations on a fantastic season, and yeah. looking forward to. To see you go again next year. Yeah, absolutely. Well summarised, sir. And uh, that is your... They are your players of the term for the rugby sides. We are now moving on to Mind Match. Mind Match. <laughs> you can't take it seriously. If Mac got a new dog, what would Mac name him? Ingo. Mac. <laughs> <laughs> What is Sam's best sporting attribute? Oh. Leadership. Being small. <laughs> Don't take it seriously. I always tell the girls, never take it seriously. If you never take it seriously, you never get hurt. If you never get hurt, you always have fun. And if you ever get lonely, you just go to the record store and visit your friends. What is the best type of Easter egg. Oh. Dairy milk. Chocolate. <laughs> Where would Sam most like to visit? Australia. <laughs> if Sam had a superpower, what superpower would it be? Grow yeah. bigger. If Mac was a pasta dish, what pasta dish would Mac be? Spaghetti bolognese. Bolognese is not a pasta dish. But Spaghetti bolognese is. I'm giving it. I'm giving it. <laughs> I got one there. This one. Right. This one. McDonald's 
KFC og Pizza Hut. McDonald's. What is Sam's middle name? George. <laughs> what is the worst time of year? Winter. Winter. If Mac won the lottery, what is the first thing he would buy? Food. Ah, so that it feels like five more seconds. Now. Right, okay. Now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> What's oh, this sorry. now on? It's awful. Now. Oh, <laughs> oh this is good. Right. Now. Oh, I can't throw. <laughs> <laughs> so, then, so then he's got more time. Now. It's <laughs> can't throw. <laughs> you said mine were bad. Now. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you doing to? <laughs> it's got all right. <laughs> <laughs> If Bo got a new dog, what would Bo name it? P Harvey. I just thought you'd say your dog, guys. Well, it's a new dog, it's not my dog. <laughs> what is Luke's best sporting attribute? Um, um, running. <laughs> Speed. <laughs> what is the best type of Easter egg? Malteser. Where would Bo most like to visit? Maldives. Yeah. <laughs> Got it right. He didn't get it right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the same, at the same time. time. You go in at Maldives and Bo going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Three seconds is really hard. Right. Um, if Luke had a superpower, what superpower would it be? Invisibility. Oh. <laughs> if Bo was a pasta dish, what pasta dish would Bo be? Ravioli. Spaghetti. I was going to say spaghetti. <laughs> McDonald's, KFC, or Pizza Hut? KFC. <laughs> What is Luke's middle name? Michael. Michael. Yeah. I love little Michael. What is the worst time of year? Um, winter. winter. Last question. If Bo won the lottery, what would be the first thing he'd buy? A cloves. Now. <laughs> Why'd you throw it so far? My bad, my bad, my bad. Now. That was good. Now. Great catch, Bill. Now. I was gonna say winter, actually. <laughs> If Shalom got a new dog, what would Shalom name it? Flash. Flash, flash, 100 yard dash. Mm. Uh, 
What is the best type of Easter egg? Chocolate. Chocolate. What is Shalom's best sporting attribute? Speed. Same. Give, give. Where would Shane most like to visit? America. Brazil. Oh. If Shalom had a superpower, what superpower would he have? Superpower. Read minds. If Shane was a pasta dish, <laughs> what pasta dish would Shane be? Chicken parmesan. <laughs> McDonald's, KFC, or Pizza Hut? KFC. KFC. What is Shalom's middle name? I don't know that one. What is the worst time of year? Winter. Summer. What? Did we just become best friends? Yup! I was gonna say winter actually. <laughs> if Shane won the lottery, what's the first thing he could buy? A house. Now. It's fine. It's fine. Get this one. Oh. Get that one. It's good, that one. No. No. Nice. No. Now. Now. Oh. <laughs> so as we're walking across the deserted snowy school playground, do you want to pan? Should we pan? Show just quite how how grim it is right now up north. There we go. Lovely. Um, we reflect on a another humorous mind match. But yeah, mainly the skills on show from in particular Sam for the for the throwing over the head. He really struggled with that. But between, as a cricketer, he'd do quite well. Between his lack of throwing ability and Mac not having a clue what was going on, <laughs> strong performance. Well done. Very well. Oh, I'm worried there. We're well, okay there. Oh, <laughs> I thought the mic was out there. So yeah, the reason there were having a little wander across as we wrap up the podcast we hope you've enjoyed this episode a bit different um a busy half term in a short five week period absolutely we're um, on the next one but we look forward to seeing you at the next one uh, have a good half term and uh, hopefully we're in school tomorrow to round off the term in the proper way absolutely see you later bye <laughs>